And so number eight then from the 2016 High Maths Paper 1. Here we go, five marks. Show that a line is a tangent to a circle. Show that this line is a tangent to that circle. Well, I'll give them names first of all, so I'll call that equation one, and I'll call that equation two. Now, there are two ways you can do this. If you've got a circle like this, and a line is meant to be a tangent to it, then instead of cutting it in two distinct points, <coughs> or missing it completely, there'll be a tangent if either those two distinct points become one coincident point, and that's probably the technique you'll use, showing that, whereas we should cut it two points, these two points in fact become one, or it would be a tangent to the circle if at the point at which it cuts it, for instance, here's an intersection, but that's not a tangent intersection because the gradient of the line is not the same as the gradient of the circle at that point. And of course, the gradient of the circle at that point is perpendicular to the gradient of the radius to that point. So the other way of showing that this line is a tangent to this circle is to get the equation of the radius which goes perpendicular to the line and show that the point of intersection of the perpendicular radius and the line in fact lies on the circle. So that this line isn't a tangent because if you drew the radius perpendicular to this, so it's extended towards it, its point of intersection with the line doesn't lie on the circle. But you'd probably do it just by showing that this line cuts that circle at two coincident points, not two distinct points. So you just go ahead and do substitute one in two, which means that wherever you see y in this one, you're going to replace it with what y is equal to. So I've got x squared plus y, 3x minus 5 squared plus 2x minus 4y, which is 3x minus 5 minus 5 equals 0. Doing that gives you the first mark, substituting the line into the circle. Now, tidy this up. So we've got x squared plus, now you don't need to rewrite that somewhere as a bracket times a bracket or use that little a box method. It's the higher, you should know the pattern for this. Square the first, 9x squared, square the last, plus 25 when you square something that's positive, twice the product is minus well, the product is minus 15, so double that will be minus 30x plus 2x, minus 4 threes are 12x, but plus 20 minus 5 is 0, not worth a mark yet, which means you end up with 10x squared minus 30, and then that's minus another 10 is minus 40x, and then 45 taken by 5 is plus 40 equals 0. That's the second mark for tidying it all up. And luckily you notice it's a common factor. Now, without going into the ins and outs of it, it's the SQA that holds the purse strings. They're the ones that are going to give you the mark, so there's no point trying to argue the facts about appropriate ways to solve an equation. We'll just factorise it and leave the factor there, whereas, of course, it's perfectly legitimate just to divide everything by 10. A fundamental principle of algebra is... If an equation is multiplied, which of course implies divided, by not just a number, but by an expression, the resulting equation will have the same set of solutions, excepting a few circumstances. The primary one being you can't multiply or divide by zero or by an expression equal to zero. But notwithstanding all of that, we'll just play their game. So I'll take the 10 out and actually leave it sitting there. x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And if it is the case that that's a tangent, you know you're going to get a double root, the same answer twice. So you may as well just go in for that factorisation straight away as a square rather than a bracket times a bracket with the same number in each. Multiply to give 4 and add to get 4. That's a 2 and a 2. Negative for the middle term means it's an x minus 2. And I'll just leave it all there. That gets the third mark. Now, now comes the statement. Equal roots means, instead of saying the line is a tangent, I'll say one is a tangent to two, since I've already named them, so I don't need to use the words. Now, there is an alternative to this. Way back at this stage here, or this stage here, 
You could use the discriminant. You could work out, I'll just put it here, b squared minus 4ac. And if that turns out to be zero, then that means you've got a pair of equal roots. So it's a tangent. And you could use either this one or this one. I'll use the same answer, I'll use this one here. So if you did it that way, you'd have b squared, that's the middle term, b squared minus 4 times the first times the last. And of course, that's 16 minus 16, which is zero. Then make that statement. That's a bit of a dead end. Because in the end here, you're wanting to find the point of intersection. So you're going to have to factorise it anyway. So you're as well just demonstrating that you've got a tangent by just factorising it to show you've just got the one solution there, that pair of equal roots. So, now we know that x equals 2. Or should have said, making a statement is a mark. Saying x equals 2 is only one part, and then putting it back into either. So if I was to use 1, for instance, I'd have y equals 3 times 2 minus 5. So y is equal to 6 minus 5 is 1. That's the final mark. Now, it did say find the coordinates. So strictly speaking, those are the coordinates. We always prefer to finish it off by saying the point of tangency is, I'll just write it, Tangency, 2, 1. Or point of tangency, 2, 1. Right, now the other method. Using the fact that the tangent to a circle should be perpendicular to the radius. So doing it this way, what you would do would be find the equation of this radius, that is the line perpendicular to the given line, the line perpendicular to it, coming from the centre or passing through the centre, finding the intersection of those two lines and showing that they in fact lie in the circle. So we don't have this case for instance, where if you've got a potential tangent and you draw a line perpendicular to it from the centre and find the point of intersection and then check if that also lies in the circle and if it doesn't, as it is in this case, then it's not a tangent. That point would have to lie in the circle to be a tangent. So, First step would be, get the equation of the line from the centre perpendicular to this. So what's the equation, gradient of that line? Well, it's in the right form, the gradient's 3, which means the gradient of the potential radius must be negative a third, the negative of the reciprocal. That's the first mark. So what's the equation of this radius then? Well, you'll be using y minus b equals mx minus a. Now, you know the gradient of it. The point on it will be the centre of the circle. So what is the centre of the circle? You can pick it out quite easily. It's half of those numbers with the opposite sign, negative 1, 2. Now that's not the second mark yet. You need to find that. We also have to put it into here. So y minus the y coordinate is negative a third of x minus the x coordinate. We'll just jump in with plus 1. Then multiplying that out, 3y minus 6 equals, keeping the negative with this side, negative x minus 1. So 3y equals negative x, take across that as plus 6, plus 5. Now you get the second mark. Now find the intersection. We'll call this 3 now because I've got names for those other two. Well, you can either use for your simultaneous equations, you can either use elimination, or since that reads y equals, I'm just going to do a substitution. Substitute 1 in 3, which means whereas 3 reads 3y, this says you can replace y with 3x minus 5. That should equal negative x plus 5. So you've got 9x minus 15 is negative x plus 5. Bringing them across, add 1 to make 10x add 15 to make 20, so that x equals 2. Not enough in its own, you then have to find out what y is, so using number 1, I would have y equals 3 times 2 minus 5, so y equals 1. So now I've got the point 2, 1. That's the next mark. Now, there's still two more marks. Now, those two marks are for checking if that, in fact, lies in the circle and then stating that if that is the case, then the line must have been a tangent. So the next step is 
I've got to verify using number two that this one fits that equation. So you've got two squared plus one squared plus two times one. No, it's two times two minus four times one minus five. I won't preempt it by saying it's equal to anything. I'll just work out what that lot comes to. Four plus one plus four minus four minus five equals zero which means 2, 1 lies on circle. That's the fourth mark for verifying that that point of intersection of the lines also lies on the circle. And then the last mark is for saying, well, that means the line's a tangent. Now, they've just given the mark for saying the line's a tangent, but the line's a tangent because the line is perpendicular to the radius at the point 2, 1 in the circle. I'll just put down what they've got. That means line is a tangent to the circle. I don't think that's really sufficient. That's all we've got though.